Hello, I'm Corey Redekop, Director of Policy with the Burnaby Board of Trade, and I'm joined here by Claire Preston, who is running in the by-election this month to join Burnaby City Council. As the Chamber of Commerce in Burnaby, we work to support our local businesses and employers and to foster a competitive, sustainable, and successful community. Our mission is to serve as the catalyst for economic growth, a convener of business and community leaders, and a champion for the interests of business. And that's why in the lead up to the municipal election uh, on June 26th, we've asked all the candidates to come and meet with us for these short videos, to share a little bit about themselves and why they're running, and to help you know uh, what your options are for this by-election debate. So let's get started. Uh, hi, Claire, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, how about you? Not too bad. Thanks for joining us to, uh, to share your, your thoughts and, and perspectives here. So to start off, did you wanna take a few minutes to share a little bit about yourself, your yeah. background, and, and why, you're, why you're running in the by-election? Yeah, so uh, I, like it was said, I'm Claire Preston. I'm running for the second time. I ran in the last um, full election in 2018. Um, the topic that um, really pushed me into running was the housing crisis and demo eviction specifically. Um, since then, I've uh, you know, I served on the mayor's task force for community housing, the Your Voice, Your Home, um, as a renter representative. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm really proud of the work that we did um, coming up with, with recommendations uh, to inform the city. Um, and I'm also uh, part of the Burnaby Parks and Recs Commission as a commissioner. Um, so, you know, I've been trying to get my hands even farther into to Burnaby since then, um, you know, really learn more about, you know, my my neighbors and, and our community and what, you know, we all think and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you know, my we've done, Mayor Hurley has done some great stuff um, as mayor, um, but I really think, you know, we can do more. Um, still and that we need more diversity um you know in age groups especially on the Burnaby City Council as well as um you know just more differing opinions you know right now really the only um the B the BCA still runs uh Burnaby for the most part you know Mayor Hurley is um done a great job you know changing a lot of stuff but again more more diversity uh, more that way more people are represented um on the council itself okay awesome the um to get a sense of your thoughts in some of um, some of some more specific areas maybe we can mm -hmm. ask a couple questions around some of the issues and priority areas that are are, are often top of mind for our members in the local business community mm -hmm. Um, so you mentioned uh, the housing task force that that you were engaged with, and 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 we were we were members of that as well. What um, and one of the suggestions or principles that we brought to that to those discussions, and 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 we and we worked with the city on on in general around housing is um, the idea of one of the solutions being a, a increasing more gentle density. This idea of putting more development outside of just the town centers to create more housing options that are a bit missing, so that in between full single family homes and, and condominiums, the row homes, the town homes, which might be family size, but, but more affordable than, than a single family home. What are your thoughts around this idea of, of moving density a, a bit more throughout the city? Yeah, that, I'm 100% behind that. I really want to see Burnaby become, you know, a livable, walkable community with, you know, gentle density, you know, next door to, to residential neighborhoods. That way, you know, a, a 25 year old can live you know, within a 25 minute walk of, of their parents and their, you know, their home. They're not, you know, suddenly having to move a city away or two cities away and be more cut off from, you know, their their support group, you know, and also that kind of, um, that kind of redevelopment also promotes more business and people being able to walk to their works or, or you know, bike, you know, if you're not having to, commute for an hour and a half each way which I've done I've I've commuted from Burnaby to Abbotsford for work before <laughs> like um it's not fun it's not great for your mental health or your physical health um and you know we need more time with our friends and our families um you know more Burnaby has beautiful parks and we need more time to spend in them and you know 
losing half an hour off of our commutes, you know, if we can work where we live, you know, that's, that's something I really, really want to see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and obviously that's only one, one possible uh, avenue for, for mm -hmm. addressing, uh, the housing issues. So with your work on, on the task force and, and, uh, and just in general, do you have any other thoughts on what, what could be done, should be done for affordable housing? And obviously for, for our, for our members and network, I'm specifically concerned around that kind of workforce housing for people who may be, yeah, young families or, or, or working full-time jobs but still aren't able to afford to live um, yeah, in you the know, part of the region. one of the things I would like to see is Burnaby set its own standards for what affordable means because we're still seeing affordable housing that's it's really for average income people. It's not for low income people, people working minimum wage, even if it's, you know, two family, two members income earners with a kid, you know, they still can't afford some of these places that are going up as affordable um, in Metro Vancouver. Um, seniors on, on fixed pensions can't, and you know, those those people are part of the community. They do spend money in the community. Um, and, you know, they're, they, they're part of it. They're part of us. And we need to, to work more. One of the things I would like to see is better use of airspace on um, municipal cities or municipal buildings. You know, um, I mentioned, I've mentioned it in, uh, you know, on my, on being on the Parks and Recs Committee that, you know, why are we putting up this new, um, you know, the rinks and stuff? Why is it just three stories? Why can't we make it six stories and put some social housing on top of it? You know, and I was, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I don't want to say I wasn't taken seriously, but I think, you know, that kind of idea uh, where the city land can be better utilized uh, would be taken more seriously if I was on the city council as opposed to just a commissioner. Okay, let's, um, so... After talking about how and we could we could talk about housing uh, as a, a big issue all day. So mm -hmm. a pivot on, on you mentioned kind of being able to um, walk and cycle, and those are all kind of modes of transportation. I know the city is currently redoing its transportation plan. Yeah. Um, so we as a board have 22 recommendations for the city to improve transportation, and that's everything from building more north-south roads, uh, improving rider amenities along transit so that we're comfortable and and, and safe and clean to use, to use transit. Um, protecting parking hubs in business districts. So you drive once to the, to the heights, but then you're able to walk around the heights as opposed to making 10, 10 car trips. Do you, what, are your, what are your priorities or what do you think ought to be a uh, part of the city's plan and, and vision for tra transportation both within uh, the city and, and, and facilitating that movement through the city as, as part of our role as the kind of the, the, the cornerstone of the region? Yeah, I mean, I've seen some of your guys' presentations or, and, you know, or heard you guys speak um, in support of other presentations that have been uh, given, uh, you know, when I attend the council meetings or just, you know, from talking to, to your members uh, and your board and all that. Um, and I'm really with you, you know, we need more dedicated cycling. We need a way for people to get north and south. Like right now, everyone, you, you get on the SkyTrain and you have to go east or west and it takes forever. And if you have to get on a bus instead, you know, then you, you lose time to, you know, being stuck in traffic and, and construction and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, we need uh, north and south, not just, obviously, I, I think we need SkyTrain there, but also dedicated bike path, safe bike paths. You know, I, again, the city has started moving on putting um, barriers between some of the bike paths and the, um, the the car lanes, but I really think we need a bit more of that. Um, just, you know, talking to cyclists and even being a pedestrian myself, um, you know, some of our, our neighborhoods, again, the city is, I know, is working hard on trying to get sidewalks in every neighborhood, on, a, on every street, um, and, you know, that's, that's great, uh, but my neighborhood still doesn't have that, and um, it's, it's dangerous, you know, there's mm -hmm. always people uh, I'm sharing the road with that are just, you know, um, 
endangering other people. <laughs> so I want, I want more communities that, yeah, you can park and do everything in the community by foot or, mm -hmm. you know, by, by wheelchair or whatever um, mode of transportation works for you. Yeah. Okay. Great. The um, gonna jump from from soup to nuts here, from for transportation to uh, property taxes. So obviously, for as a business group, one of one of our our, our pet peeves is, is always uh, keeping an eye on the tax rate. And um, so tax bills have come out, and, and everyone's uh, those are due in, in the beginning of July for, for for residents and businesses. And one of the, the biggest challenges, and I don't know whether you've come across this uh, yet, is is the idea of highest and best use, which is where a, uh, a small business or, or, or a property is, is valued based on its redevelopment potential. So you may have a, a one level bakery or, or, a, or a shop, which might be in a very desirable corner or corridor. So you could, that could be redeveloped into a tower or, or something else. So the property value is worth $100 million and then that gets taxed as if it's $100 million as opposed to a one level bakery. So this is a big challenge. It's a provincial issue, mm -hmm. and the city uh, we've been working with the city on trying to to move this forward. Do you have any thoughts on whether that that specifically about whether you your, your thoughts on whether you'd be an ally for our work on on fixing um, highest and best use, and this yes. general about the kind of the split between um, tax rates with residential and, and business, and how we keep that competitive so that we we make sure that we're welcoming to business in the city. Yeah, I am not a fan of taxing people based on potential because. The, obviously, the potential is not the reality. Um, you know, I mm -hmm. I admit, I, as not a business owner and not a property owner, you know, I know a little bit less, and I would fall more toward you know listening to to experts such as yourself or or other members of your board on this type of issue. But you know, I yeah, I think our tax system is really unfair uh, to small businesses. Um, especially, yeah, local businesses, and uh, I would really like to see um, that fixed, and I would be an advocate for that uh, uh, as a city council member. Great, thank you. The, um, looking at uh, a, a bit of a broader, a broader challenge or, or a generational challenge around climate and the environment, uh, the, the, the Burmese Board of Trade, we for 15 years have been advocating for um, for. Uh, action on climate change and, and the importance of getting ahead of, of environmental regulations and what needs to be done to, to move ourselves in the right direction. What do you think, do you have any broad, your broad framework or perspectives on what at a city level um, the city can be doing, should be doing to combat and mitigate the impacts of climate change, both, yeah. both locally and our contribution to it globally? Yeah, um, you know, some of the things I would, you know, ag again, as a member of the committee, uh, the Parks and Rec Committee, you know, I've said, um, you know, some of these new buildings, I would like to see more green stuff, you know, you know, glass, the, the, the glass in the new buildings be solar glass, solar panel glass. And, you know, they're like, oh, we kind of looked at that. It's kind of expensive. And I'm like, does that matter? Like, they're going to offset themselves, event like, you know, it takes a couple of years, but, you know, if you've got this huge wall of glass and it's generating solar energy, that's not only energy you're not paying for, especially in a energy intense building like a rink or a pool. Um, but also if you're generating enough by putting enough other things in there, um, you know, there's lots of other technologies, like you can put little um, water turbines in your drainage your, your, your rain, rainwater drainage and, and that kind of stuff. If you generate enough, then you're also giving back to the, the buildings nearby and that kind of stuff. Um, other things I would love to see, um, better use of uh, our roofs. There's a lot of initiatives in other cities where they're making uh, local farming on top of, um, you know, industrial buildings uh, that, Partially, you know, that is a better use of space. It lets us keep our footprint on food down, your, our, our, our green footprint. Um, and also it brings greenery into the neighborhood that a lot of these industrial neighborhoods are missing, which, you know, helps, you know, clear out the air in the, in the area. Um, the other thing I would love to see is us incentivize, you know, green technology manufacturers and, and other creators to, to move into Burnaby. Um, 
in in various ways. So mm -hmm. you know maybe one of these places that make the the solar glass for buildings. You know if we you know get them if we help them get into our neighborhood, provide jobs here, maybe we could cut a deal with them to get a better deal on the glass for our, our rink, you know, like that kind of, those are the kind yeah. of things I think about. Okay. And yeah, one, 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 thanks for that. Cause yeah, one of the, one of the areas we often uh, advocate for government is that yeah, they, they have, we, we see government at all levels having a role as, as, as leaders in this space and often can be first, first customers or proof of concept. And then if, if they could, if they would use whether it's wood construction or solar glass or, or, or whatever it might be in, in some of their infrastructural and that, that might lead the way for, for the private mm -hmm. sector as well. So thanks for your comments on that. I think we're, we're butting up against the times. I'm going to throw one last question at yeah. you before I let you go here. Um, an issue that, that has been bubbling up a little bit more over the last year, unfortunately, uh, from our members is the issue of crime. Um, and not just the high profile shootings around the region, as disturb disturbing as those are, but I'm talking more about the property crime, break and enter, kind of the things that are grind and really are a cost of business. Do you have any yeah. comments? Oh, we, we mentioned kind of industrial parks. I mean, yeah, we're, we're seeing this in, in, in pockets throughout the city. Do you have any comments on what can be done or, or should be done at a city level to support businesses facing kind of property crime and, and theft and vandalism issues? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's bad right now. It's not only is there, you know, there's less people around to, to kind of deter other people people from doing that kind of thing because they're like oh someone will see me you know because of covid but also you know there's more poverty right now too because people are losing their jobs because of covid and they don't have um you know help and they're acting out in anger or you know maybe they're stealing to you know supplement their their income in some way um and i really think the city could be doing more to help these people so that they're not committing crimes in the first place, you know, you know, helping alleviate some of these stressors. Um, you know, one of the things on when I was on the housing task force, I personally advocated for was that housing, um, the rent bank, mm -hmm. the rent bank that the city's providing. And, you know, they did implement that. And I think that's probably helped a lot of people um, to not send them to to the desperations or the ang to, to being so angry that, that they're acting out in such ways. And I would, while I personally don't have um, a lot of ideas off the top of my head, I would be, I'm always, I'm, I admit I'm not an expert. I want to listen to experts though. I want, if I'm in city council, I want to talk to people that know better than me, that can, that do the studies that, that, you know, do practice these things and see how they go. And that's really, um, yeah, that, that's where I, I would go with that. Okay, awesome. Well, I, we're, we're, we're at, at our, 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 time, our time goal here so that we can keep these nice and brief for everyone to have a chance to review all the candidates. So yes. thank you very much, Claire, for taking the time to come and, and share your thoughts with us and, and, and what your, your philosophies and approaches would be. Okay.